I made this unconventional air conditioning system that effectively cools down a single room and is a cross between a rich man's swamp cooler and a mini split AC. Now I'm not going to go over in this video my personal reasons for doing this versus just purchasing a conventional air conditioner, uh, but I'm going to show you that this works, it works effectively, and I'm going to put the parts list for what I used in the video description below. They will be affiliate links, so I will get a small commission if you use them, but it won't cost you anything extra. Now, all this is using here is a 120 millimeter uh, heat exchanger or radiator for a computer case and then two Noctua fans here. I don't know the exact model offhand, but these are the 1700 RPM model and they push, I believe, 2.93 millimeters of water. You can use just one fan, but it won't really move enough air through this heat exchanger because, um, because the holes between all of these little slots here are so small, it takes a little bit more pressure. So you need to double up the fans if you want this to put out more air. It will still work, just not quite as well. Uh, so that's basically all this is set up as. This is not a final design by any means. This is a testing setup uh, just to kind of uh, prove the concept of it and uh, make sure that it works continuously. This here is just a tray from a freezer and then this is a, a rack from a freezer and this here is just a drip tray. And you can see there's quite a bit of water. This was just from overnight. So this works just like any other air conditioner or dehumidifier. It's going to cause condensation and you need to have something to catch the condensation if you're just going to set it up simply like this. Um, I may, however, make a box for this all to go in and make it look nice and neat and have its own drip tray. Um, but you can easily just set it up just like this and it works all the same. All there is here is just two vinyl tubes for an input and an output, uh, which is coming from the water that's in the chest freezer, which is in the basement. And on that note, this will not work if you put the chest freezer in the same room that you're trying to cool down and it will warm up another room if you put it in there. However, in my basement, because my basement is a basement and it's quite large, a chest freezer doesn't have any effect on the temperature down there. The temperature output that you're looking at here, this is a temperature probe, it's sitting right in front of there. And if I put my hand in front of here, it's blowing out nice, cool air. This blows, this here blows towards the bed. I should probably explain that this is in the bedroom and the whole reason I really put this in here was because the bedroom even if it's 20 degrees colder outside, the bedroom temperature will go up. That's from the human body heat um, and a very well insulated house and a brick house on that. So uh, this actually cools the room down and keeps it cold um, versus not having it at all. And actually I don't even need to use the house, the whole house air conditioning system to cool the room down. This does it by itself. Here is the temperature output. It is putting out 53 degree air coming out of there, and that is actually, in, mo in a lot of cases, colder than the air that's gonna come out of a regular air conditioner. So now I'll show you the temperature in the bedroom. Here is the temperature of the bedroom currently, it's 72 degrees. The lowest temperature overnight was 71 in the bedroom. Um, I've seen it go as low as 70, but basically it's holding between 70 and 72 degrees. And I've been running it like this for several days now, uh, actually about a week. And that's with the outside temperature being in the 80 to 85 degree range. This is all Fahrenheit, by the way. Um, and the temperatures at night are roughly between 60 and 70, mostly 70 degrees during the night. And it's been holding this temperature between 71 and 72 uh, for the past several days with just this chest freezer AC system running. Here's the current temperature of the whole rest of the house. It is 77 degrees. Uh, that's because the air conditioning system is not set to come on during the day until it's 79, which it probably won't. But that's just showing you that the rest of the house is significantly warmer than the bedroom that the chest freezer AC system is keeping cool. I'm now down in the basement, which is almost directly underneath the bedroom. The two uh, vinyl lines, those are quarter inch by the way, they come down through this insulated tubing, and this is just half inch copper pipe insulation. You do not need to separate the tubes. The uh, thermal transfer of vinyl tubing is very low, so you're not gonna cause interference between the cold side and the warm side coming back down to the chest freezer. So you can wrap them up in a single uh, pool noodle style uh, pipe insulation here. So it comes down and then it goes down right into the chest freezer here, which is a five cubic foot chest freezer. It doesn't really matter what brand you get. They all do the same thing. I believe this one is Insignia. Yeah, it's right there on the side. 
So both those tubes go in there, and then I have a uh, thermostatic switch here with the temperature probe that's in the water in the chest freezer. Uh, right now there is 24 gallons of water in there, which is all that's really needed. If you add more water into the chest freezer, it increases the uh, cooling time that you get if you were to not run this chest freezer. Um, if you put too much in there though, it could take a longer time to cool that back down if you were to turn this off and back on it and basically run it intermittently. So a lower volume of water uh, might actually be better, but in my case, I'm using about 24 gallons, which works out in my case. So over here right now, you can see the temperature is set at, well, it's not set, but this is the temperature of the water in the chest freezer currently. It's 46.4 degrees, 0.5, and it keeps changing. Now, it has been holding this temperature for the past several days. It is not going up or going down except by tenths of a degree. Um, and it has been consistently outputting that 52 to 53 degree temperature out of the heat exchanger upstairs in the bedroom. And the room, as I said, has been maintaining a temperature of around 71, 72 degrees every single day and all night, basically 24 seven. So that whole, this whole setup is basically running in equilibrium, which means that it can run continuously without, um, without the chest freezer becoming overburdened uh, and is able to keep up with keeping the water cool. If you change one thing, such as a, make it a larger heat exchanger, a more stronger fan, anything like that, you're gonna deplete the capabilities of the system and you won't be able to run it continuously. I'd also like to say that if you do decide to do something like this and use a chest freezer and you put it in a warm room, like another room, or if it's running in a garage or something like that where it's gonna be a warmer environment, you would not wanna run a chest freezer continuously. Even though a chest freezer or a refrigerator are all essentially have the exact same components as an air conditioner, they aren't really meant to run on a continuous basis. In my case, this is sitting in a nice cool basement and um, it, is, it is not having any issues with overheating. It has not shut off once uh, since I started testing it. Now, originally my intentions for this was to use this as a, I'm calling it cold battery, even though I understand that the, um, when it comes to energy, it's actually the opposite of that. You know, when you're cooling water down, you're basically removing energy from it. And when it's warming back up, you're putting energy back into it. So when I say cold battery, I'm saying I'm creating something that's cold, storing the cold, which is what the chest freezer does, and then using it later. So basically what's happening is there's just a little thin piece of insulation on the top here, which keeps this covered. All this is really doing is providing a little bit of insulation for the temperatures inside here, although because it is a deep freezer, it can probably be fine without covering it, but water will evaporate. So mainly this is for evaporation and a little bit of extra insulation. The down inside here is very simple. That's quarter inch final tubing has a uh, backflow preventer or check valve on it. That's the input for the transfer pump. It is getting sucked up through there into the tube through the transfer pump and then goes upstairs, goes through the heat exchanger and then comes right back down into here. It is sucking it up from the bottom because it, that's where the colder temperatures are gonna be. And then it expels it up here at the top where the warmer temperatures is, are gonna be and is gonna create a natural kind of uh, flow in this system. And I can feel that the air temperature inside here is very cold, although as I've said, if you were to leave this open, it would still be cooling the water down and you wouldn't be losing a whole lot. Uh, it wouldn't be warming the water up much at all. Uh, as I've said, this is mainly just for uh, a vapor barrier for the most part. Although it probably does add a little bit of extra efficiency, but it's not by much. So that's all that's really going on inside here. Um, and I just use this rack to kind of hold uh, the lines over to the one side where I cut out the slot in this. That's all it's doing. This is the 12 volt pump here. It is external of the chest freezer. Now, obviously you can get something like an aquarium pump and just put it directly in the chest freezer without using a check valve. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend doing that because that's gonna warm up the water in the chest freezer. It's gonna reduce the efficiency. So it's better to keep it external uh, where the heat here is expelled within the air and not transferred into the fluid pumping through the tubing. Before I forget, the whole purpose of this thermostatically controlled switch is so that the water in the chest freezer never, never freezes. Now you could put some sort of a fluid in here or add something to it to keep it from freezing. I do not recommend doing that because water is one of the best uh, 
liquids on the planet for uh, transferring thermal energy. It does it quick. If you were to put something in here like alcohol, it's going to be significantly less uh, as far as its capabilities goes of transferring heat. And in other words, if you put a different fluid in here, such as like an antifreeze, and it pumps it through the heat exchanger upstairs in the bedroom, it's not going to pump out quite as cold of air through there because it's not going to be able to transfer that heat energy into the back into the fluid as quickly as it's moving through it. Um, water is the best thing to use. Uh, if you decide to go with something different, uh, that's up to you. It might work in, in your case, but I recommend just using water, keep it simple. And because of that, this here needs to be set so that it will turn the chest freezer off when it hits 32 degrees so the water doesn't freeze solid. You could probably make it colder if you, that's the whole point of what I was talking about. If you want to use something that will stop it from freezing so you can cool it down colder and then pump colder fluid through it, you could uh, do that. You're going to run into some issues though if you do that. The colder temperature fluid you pump through the heat exchanger in the room you're trying to cool down, uh, the more condensation you're going to have built up in that heat exchanger and it could clog up the uh, little holes that go through it. So I have this set to go or turn off at 32 degrees and then come back on when it hits 45 degrees. And as I was saying before, since I called this a cold battery, Basically, it takes around anywhere from six to 10 hours to cool down uh, down to 32 degrees, the 24 gallons that are held in this chest freezer. So what I would do is this would run during the day, and then at night, I would turn the pump and the fans on to use the cold water that's in there. This chest freezer will store uh, cold water for several days. If it goes down to 32 degrees, it will hold that temperature for about two days at 32, 33 degrees. And then for several days after that, it will still keep it below 40 degrees. So why is this system so good, you might ask? Well, because if you have a power outage in the summer and you wanna have a cool room, well, you have a ton of water in here that's kept cold. So you could run this entire system without turning the chest freeze around. You could run it for 10 to 12 hours of and have nice cold air uh, coming out in the room you're trying to cool or just blowing in you, and you personally and you can run it off a simple battery a simple small battery bank uh, like a pocket sized battery bank will be able to run this little pump that's up here that I just showed you and the two little fans on the heat exchanger you can run it all night long and it will have no problems at all now if you do decide to use an old trust freezer or buy a new one whether it doesn't matter um, if you are going to fill this with water, you need to seal the seams with silicone, just like a fish tank would be. So there's a drain down there, and there's a plug on the inside. You need to seal that with silicone, and the aluminum sheet on the inside will have these seams, and you need to make sure you put an ample amount of silicone on those seams inside there. You could not really see it in there through the water too well, um, but I really recommend doing that. It's not even just a recommendation. You you have to do that because what will end up happening is water will get in there, even though the this has a tub in it that's basically waterproof, the water will get behind the uh, aluminum sheeting and it will basically ruin the insulation between that and the uh, condenser coils, which are inside the walls here on the outside. Um, so it will it will ruin your trust freezer if you don't seal it with silicone. So as I've shown here in this video, this little tiny 120 millimeter PC desktop heat exchanger and 12 volt fans and trust freezer set up with a pump is capable of cooling an entire room down and keeping it cool even in summer temperatures. And it has no problem doing it. This is pumping out nice cool air here. It pumps it right over towards the bed. It's very nice and cool to sleep in at night. Um, there is one thing I want to leave here in this video, and that is do not pump a super cooled fluid through the heat exchanger. Uh, and I'm going to talk about why that is in just a second here. What I mean by a super cooled fluid is taking something like uh, windshield washer fluid, an alcohol solution, or uh, something like an antifreeze, and putting the chest freezer and then letting the chest freezer get down to its maximum cold temperature, which could be negative 10, neg neg negative 20 degrees, something like that. What ended up happening is if you pump that super cooled fluid up through this heat exchanger, it's not going to have, not only going to have an issue with a, a ton of condensation uh, after it warms back up a little bit, it's also going to have an issue with it freezing. So what's going to end up happening is it's going to pump through here, 
is going to make this so cold that it's going to form ice on it. And then the ice will clog up these little holes that the airflow needs to go through. And you will have no airflow whatsoever. So it's not going to help anything by having a super cooled fluid. Um, it might be okay if you pump, say, something like um, maybe 25 degree temperature fluid max if you pump it through here. But even then, you're probably still going to get a little bit of... Uh, icing on it. I, I wouldn't recommend doing that. So do not do that. And definitely do not put a salt solution in the water because that is going to corrode the aluminum shell inside. So there's not a whole lot else to talk about other than this works. And as I said, all the parts that I've used here will be in the video, video description below. So thanks for watching. Hope that helps.